for web developers. macOS or Linux were so much better options than Windows in regards to development environment. Everything was more complicated on Windows and not as enjoyable as with the other operating systems. With Windows Subsystem system for Linux is not the case anymore. In today's video, we'll have a look at how to set up the ultimate environment for web development using Windows Subsystem for Linux. Let's get started. If you are using Windows 10, first thing we need to do is install the Windows Terminal. Open Microsoft Store and install the application. After installing Windows Terminal, we need to install the WSL2, Windows Subsystem for Linux. First, we are gonna list all the distributions available. We will choose Ubuntu version 20. To install Ubuntu, run WSL install distribution Ubuntu 20.04. After successfully installing WSL2, a new terminal window will pop up where we have to insert the username and password for our Linux distribution. We are gonna close this one and open it instead from our Windows terminal. As you can see it doesn't look too bad, but we can improve it a lot. So first, let's go to the settings and choose our Windows terminal as default terminal application. Let's change also the default profile to Ubuntu. Click save. So now, whenever we open Windows terminal, it will open Ubuntu instance. First thing we need to do is install ZSH. After installing ZSH, we need to head over to omyz.sh and install it. As you can see, the default shell will be changed to ZSH. Yes. After all my ZSH was installed, the default shell was changed. So now, whenever we open a Linux distribution, the ZSH will be used. As you can see, the look of it changed and it looks so much better. The default location when you open the terminal is Windows User Home Directory. Let's go to our Linux Home Directory, which is slash home slash username. Here I created a projects folder where all the web development projects reside. A great theme that we are gonna install for our terminal is power level 10k. This is very useful. In a git project it will tell us which branch are we on and it will show us the path and some cool icons. We have to git clone the project. After cloning it, this will install it directly where it needs to be residing, so it's very easy. Next thing we need to do is go and update the shell configuration file. You might be used to using bash. In this case, since we are using zsh, the configuration file is under home.zshrc. Here, we are gonna insert power level 10k. We save. In order for the changes to be available, we need to open a new instance. The first time we open a new instance, we are welcomed with a configuration screen. Here it asks us if this icon looks like a diamond, and in our case it doesn't. This is due to the reason that our phone doesn't support icons. Let's fix this. We can fix it by installing a great font for terminals called Nerf Fonts. Let's go ahead and install it. The one that I like in particular is called Meslo Nerf Fonts. You can download it for Windows directly. In the GitHub repo called Nerf Fonts, scroll down to the option 2 latest release. Search for Meslo. Click on it, this will download the zip file with all the fonts files. Once extracted, we can select all, right click, show more options, install for all users. What this does is installing all the fonts at once on our Windows system. We have to restart the terminal, open again, let's go to settings, select our Ubuntu distribution terminal and change the font to Meslo. And as you can see, now the diamond appeared. However, the font is very big, we are gonna fix this in a second. Let's first configure our power level team. We see the diamond, yes. We see the lock, yes. Yes. Here is a matter of taste. I like it to be as clean as possible. Unicode, 256 colors, 24 hour format, one line, compact, many icons, as fluent as possible. And I would like to see the full history from where each command was run. So I will choose now, verbose, and confirm applying changes. Now, whenever you open a new window, as you can see, you have pretty icons here. But what do we do with the home directory? I don't want to see the Windows home directory and instead use the Linux one. Let's go ahead and configure again. This can be easily fixed by changing directory to home username project. 
What I like to do is have my projects opened each time I open the terminal. Save and open a new instance. As you can see, the default path has changed. Now, let's change the font size. The font size is too big. Yes, much better, much neat. Let's clone a simple Hello Git World project. As you can see, we have pretty icons and the current branch we are in. This is cool, but let's take it a step further and install very useful plugins for ZSH. If you go to the configuration file, if you search for plugins, you will see here a list of plugins. Let's see a list of plugins available. You can head over to the OMIZSH repository and scroll down to plugins. Here you can find a full list of plugins available to be used. Plugins that I definitely recommend are Git, ZSH Auto Suggestions, Node, ZSH Syntax Highlighting and if you are using AWS, the AWS plugin. Now that we have set up a nice terminal together with Ubuntu running under Windows, let's see how we can edit the projects that reside in Ubuntu Linux distribution. For that we are gonna use Visual Studio Code. Let's open Visual Studio Code, open the plugins section and install WSL plugin. We need to install the remote WSL. Once you install the remote WSL plugin, a new button appears in the bottom left hand corner of the Visual Studio Code window. That will open a new session of Visual Studio Code working directly on Linux so you can open any project cloned under Linux. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with the latest web development videos that I will be posting once every two weeks.